Welcome to the Pen to Publish podcast from the two Alexas. If you're planning to pen and publish or are penning at the moment, then you're definitely in the right place. We talk all about the writing and publishing process, and we know this podcast is helping hundreds of writers all over the globe. I'm Alexa Witten, author, typesetter, and independent publisher, and... I'm Alexa Tewkesbury, author, editor, and proofreader. We have many writing resources for you, including our brand new pen to published website, where you can get all the show notes and guest information. We've interviewed some really interesting writers and authors, and there's also our Writers Refinery Facebook group, which is available for you to join. We love getting feedback, so do please leave us a review, and don't forget to hit subscribe so that all the latest episodes pop up in your podcast feed. So let's get started. Well, hello and welcome to the show. Now, this is the last one before we have our interview guest, the lovely Rachel Rowlands. And my word, this series has gone so quickly. They all do, don't they? They're like, psh, gone. <laughs> and full confession here, this is the second time we're recording this because the first time I forgot to hit record. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to be talking about where to sell your book and full transparency here. I am not an expert in the selling side of books. I can help you write a book. I can certainly lay your book out. I can create your book a beautiful cover. I can get your book printed, but I am no expert at selling the things. So Alexa and Tewksbury and I are going to chat to you about the obvious places where you can sell them as where also you should list them for maximum sales. Selling your book is a very time consuming process if you're a self publisher because the greatest ambassador for your book is you. So building up a good fit following on social media to go towards creating your author platform is vital. And that's something you can be doing while you're still writing. You don't need to wait until you're published. Your platform is where you shout about yourself, basically, who you are, why you write, what you write, who else is involved. Because it's only through shouting about yourself and your book that anyone will know it's going to be out there. You need to make what you're publishing sound irresistible to potential readers so that they're queuing up to make their pre-orders. Think of your platform as creating a personal brand. You know, who are you? What are you about? What's your book about? And why is it going to be your potential reader's next favourite read? And with regard to the platform, if you're looking at traditional publishing, this is something that agents and publishers will want to see that you've established because it helps them know that you're an engaging personality who has followers and will be able to sell books. Also, you want your followers, so your your readers, to help you sell your books by shouting about them too and how good they are. So getting as many followers as possible can only be good. Yeah, I think it's really important that you try and establish yourself on social media before you start writing your book as well. We've talked about this right at the beginning of, I think, even in um, series one, the marketing side of the book is relentless. And it's also something people don't think about until they've written the book. And that is a really big mistake. Now, of course, if you're traditionally publishing your book, most of this should be done for you. Although I do hear that trad publishers are now looking at your social media following. And I do think now they need they actually start asking you to help step in and sell your book as well. So do read the fine print when it comes to your contract. I've heard of many smaller authors being dropped by their publishers as they haven't sold as many books as they had anticipated. So you might find yourself having to step in, so to speak. However, there are several places that you'll be automatically listed. And if you publish through Compass Publishing UK, these places are standard as well. So the first place your book has to be listed on is PubWeb or Title Editor. This is Nielsen's database and your ISBN will become active once this step has taken a place. Now, of course, if you're not using Compass Publishing and you're using your own ISBN, then you're going to need to register the book yourself. If you don't do this step, then no other distributor, including Amazon or database, will see your book. I'll just quickly say Compass Publishing is Alexa Witten's publishing company. So if you're having your book published through her publishing company, that is Compass Publishing, which is what she's referring to. Yes. 
Now, there are two types of listings that you can do when you register through Title Editor. There's the standard, which is free, or the enhanced, which is free for up to 10 titles or less. Again, if you go through Compass Publishing, then you'll need to pay £35 a year for one title. And this allows you then to have a more in-depth synopsis listed. It's definitely worth doing as your free listing gives no synopsis on your listing apart from the one on Amazon. The second place you'll need to register yourself onto, and I thought this was automatic once you've done the title editor bit, but it isn't, is the Gardener's website. Now, Gardeners are the U- one of the biggest UK distributors of books to bookshops. If you don't do this extra step and tell Gardeners of your ISBN and what that title is, then your book will be shown as not available on their website. You don't want that because they are the leading distributor in the UK. So if you don't sideline and talk to Gardeners about your ISBN, then when a, if someone goes into a bookshop to ask for your book, the bookshop will then generally go to the Gardener's website to find it and order it. And it'll be listed as not available. Now, if you want to be listed on the Waterstones website and you haven't gone through Compass again, then you'll need to set up a trading relationship with them for which an application form can be got either through Gardener's, Waterstones or Compass. Again, if you've gone through me, then this will be done for you. And yes, your book will automatically be listed on Amazon, whether you want to sell through them or not. If you leave it at as is, as in you don't want to sell on Amazon, once you've registered your book on Title Editor, an automatic listing is made, but it will just say that it's unavailable. Now, other websites you might want to list your books are, obviously, Amazon is a default, but you might actually want to go and upload your book so it can be sold through them. Ingram, obviously, they are people that do the printing for you, but they will then list your books on places like Barnes and Noble and other places in the US. Now, a quick word on Amazon. The best way for them to sell your book is for you to set up a KDP account and let them print the book for you. You used to be able to sell your books through their reseller account, or it used to be called Amazon Advantage, but their Amazon Advantage program now has been closed and their reseller account is such a faff. Not only does it cost you £25 a month to have, you then have to process the order. So you need to then send the book to Amazon and then they send the book on to the client. It's a lengthy and drawn out process. And it's just a pain in the backside. And I actually think books that are distributed through the reseller account are actually downgraded by Amazon because they know how much effort is required on their part. Now, of course, if you can sell your book directly through your own website, then you'll make all of your cover price. This is something that I always tell my authors to do, even if it's through a Facebook shop. So even if you get yourself a Facebook business page and sell your book directly through Facebook, this will then give you a lot more money in the long term, because obviously you can charge for postage and packing and you can charge 100 percent for your cover price. Especially if your book is a nonfiction business type book, then you will definitely need to be selling it through a website. You can also, if you've gone through the Facebook business profile, you can then link that to an Instagram professional account. So you can sell both on through Instagram and through Facebook as well, because you can basically link your Instagram to your Facebook business page. And then you can set up your shop through the business suite. I'm currently reorganizing my Instagram and Facebook to do the same. So I think it's a really good idea to have a social media presence too, especially if it's a children picture book, you're going to want to be on your social medias. We've got lots of people who we've helped become authors through there and they're selling their books through their social media channels. And it's probably one of the key ways that they sell their book, actually. Now, how you actually get your audience on these platforms isn't something I really get involved with. But if you join our Writers Refinery Facebook community, 
Then the author that is Kylie Dixon has done a fab video telling you exactly how to sell your book through Facebook. Also, another really good idea once you've got your book up and running is go on to Goodreads. You just go to the Goodreads website, which is www.goodreads.com and join the author program. It's free and you can get yourself some really great reviews plus your author profile put up there. One of our clients, Lisa Brett, has just got herself on there and her book is now available to search. So she's going to start collating not only Amazon reviews, which is a really good way of getting your book's visibility up, but she's also going to get some Goodread reviews as well. And I actually need to get my book onto Goodreads too, so I'm definitely going to do that. And getting reviews for your book prior to publication is also a great way to draw attention to them. You can find book reviewers on Google and on social media, um, on Twitter, see who's reviewing in your genre and just get in touch to see if they'd like to write a review for your book. Look at author Facebook pages and writing groups and ask, does anyone know any book reviewers? These probably won't be paid people, but just people who love reading and want to spread the word about fabulous new books. There are also authors who take part in what's known as blog tours. They write guest posts about their books for various different blogs, which widens their reach as they're then tapping into other writers' audiences. So if you have author friends who write in your genre or even a different one and they have blogs, do get in touch with them to see if they'd be happy for you to write a post. It's great for social media to be able to post that you're guesting on various blogs. You even set it out like a, a schedule for a proper tour. It all elevates your presence and gives the opportunity to showcase your personality and ultimately helps you to sell more books directly to your readers. Yeah, exactly. And there's no reason why you can't go and approach your local bookshops as well. Another one of my authors that I've just helped publish her book, she's done some fabulous going in and speaking to independent bookshops in her town. And they've agreed to stock her book as well. So don't be afraid of doing that. If you've written a children's book, then I would definitely give Seven Stories an email asking if they'd like to stock your book. Now, Seven Stories is the National Centre for Children's Books, and it's a museum and visitor centre dedicated to children's literature, and it's based in the Oosburn Valley up in Newcastle upon Tyne. They hold all sorts of events and the Writer's Salon, which is something that I've been involved in, which is basically a group of dedicated to authors and writers-to-be, and they hold workshops up there. Now, just because they're based up in Newcastle, don't underestimate it as a great place to go and visit as well if you're ever up in the north and to see whether or not they'll stock your books as well. Now, other places to sell your book, as I've already said, are your local bookshops, even libraries. But again, it will need a bit of a personal touch and it will need you to go and pound the pavement and actually go and speak to the managers of the individual bookshops. Now, there is one platform that has really taken off in terms of book selling and that is TikTok. Now I'm going to hold my hand up. I don't, I'm not on TikTok. I don't use TikTok. However, one of my authors, Catherine Gladwin, has had a huge success with this platform. She is over there, but like any social media platform, you need to invest your time in it. I don't have a profile, so I'm not that much help, but I did ask her to give me some top tips if this is somewhere where you want to be. And this is her feedback. So tell and remind your audience what the book is about and who it's for. Share your book wins, e.g. a Kindle copy just sold on in Australia or it sold in some remote place or the fact that you got 18 five star reviews or 30 copies have sold today. Read bits from the book for 15 seconds and leave people wanting more. Tell people why you wrote the book. So basically your story and have a lead magnet to get your ideal reader onto a mailing list via your bio. Avoid competitions as people won't buy if they think there's a chance to get a free one. And now she is selling six times what she was prior to being a TikToker. And her book, How to Become a VA, is now a bestseller most days. And of course, don't forget that very popular hashtag book talk which I think is huge. It's quite competitive, 
but I think if you can really focus your efforts on that platform, then you, it sounds like you could have some really good results. I'd love to fathom out TikTok, but I, I think it is a pretty relentless platform. The whole social media thing, if you're going to do it properly, is pretty relentless. But that one in particular, I think you said to me, Alexa, that you have to post four or five times a day mm. to keep up the engagement. Yeah. Um, but you can get really high numbers of views and followers as long as you keep up your presence and your content. Mm. So I think maybe you have to do a lot of preparation and planning in advance. But I think it's an exciting way to showcase who you are and what you write about. Yeah, I think you really need to work out where your audience is, like with any social media platform, where are, where do your ideal readers hang out? Where are they? Because if they're on Facebook, then don't go to TikTok, stay on Facebook. If they're on Instagram, then go to Instagram. If they're on LinkedIn, go and spend your time on LinkedIn. It's the eight old adage of where are your ideal readers? Where are they hanging out? Because there's no point in being on a platform just because you feel you should be on there if you know, you're not going to get any sales at the end of the day. Now, that's kind of our whistle stop tour, really, of where to list and how to sell your book. I know we haven't really gone into that much detail, but Alexa and I, it's not something we really do. It's not really something we consult on. So it would be a little bit, I think, inauthentic of us to claim to be experts in this area when really we're, we're not. But all I would say is, whatever you decide to do, do it well and do your research and make sure that you are getting results. And also, if you're writing a book currently or you're about to write a book, start your pre-marketing right now. Don't wait till that book is out. Yes, definitely. Get yourself a pre-order page up on your website or however you want to sell the book so that people can then go and order the book as well don't wait until your book is published because not only will you be sick of the book by that point <laughs> but b <laughs> you're gonna have to then really spend a lot of time marketing the thing too so yeah like alexa said start now get people invested in the story now uh, you're much more likely then to get more engaged people who are then buy the book at the end now, we'll be talking to Rachel Rowlands for our final episode of this series. And I know she's doing fabulous things with reels. So we're going to be asking her quite a bit about that, aren't we? We are reels. And um, she's fairly new on TikTok, but she's also uh, creating different things to go on there. And she uses Instagram a lot. And she just she's just produced some amazing little short videos. And so I'm dying to ask her where she finds some of the things she's included, how she puts things together. And also <laughs> an age old question, time management, mm. because one of the things I struggle with, I, I'm always fighting deadlines. And it's finding the extra time to do those extra bits because so she's, she's written and self-published a book that is just recently out and she's found the time for that as well. And I'm intrigued how she's done this as she's also a full-time editor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like with anything, it takes time. So you've got to know where to spend that time most effectively in amongst your day-to-day -day stuff. So yeah, watch out for that episode because I think it's going to be really insightful. And she's going to tell us all the things that we don't know. Which is always good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's it from us. Don't forget our brand new website, www.thepentopublishpodcast.com, where you'll find all of the show notes for this episode. And we will see you next time. In the meantime, keep writing and let us know how you get on and come over to the writers group the Writers Refinery Facebook group. It's free to join. Just make sure you answer all the questions and we'll see you there over on Facebook. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.